We all want to be better than we were. If there is one lasting aspect of the pandemic, it is this thirst for change. And so, collectively, we are turning to self-help books like never before. They've always been around, but now everyone's looking for the next idea that's going to push them forward. The humble self-help book dates back, in some form or other, to ancient Egypt. Today, in modern times, self-help was brought into a new era, with work like Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People. The personal growth industry has had no shortage of success. It's worth more than $10 billion in the US alone in 2020. We all know books like Rich Dad, Poor Dad, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Think and Grow Rich. And self-help has created its own celebrities, Tony Robbins, Deepak Chopra, Eckhart Tolle. The insight that they offer is greatly valued by many. But there's also a view that says it's all simply nonsense. And that's what we are going to find out. So with this in mind on Quest Means Business, we're going to give you some guidance, some pointers, some suggestions. A new series, Reading for Succeeding. And we start with Burn the Boats. It's a book by Matt Higgins. And it has an interesting theory to help you get on. It basically says we're all too tied to plan B. So he says don't have a second backup plan. Higgins' core thesis is that too much choice renders us paralysed. He believes having a plan B merely distracts you, preventing from pushing on, and argues it's critical to know why you're striving towards a goal, because that's what will make it all worthwhile. If all of this sounds like too much, ask yourself, what's the worst that can happen? Once you put these philosophies into practice, Matt Higgins says that's when success begins. If you go all the way back to 207 BC in China, every country, every century has a fabled journey of a military strategist outnumbered 100 to 1, and the way that they succeed is by literally eliminating their escape route. They burn the boats and they destroy their food provisions. But yet we reject that in our everyday life. We reflexively gravitate towards undermining our own plan A by having a plan B. And that's why I decided to write this book. This idea of no plan B, it goes counter to everything we've been taught. Because if your plan A fails, you're screwed. Mm. So it's actually not true, number one. The idea of plan A incorporates figuring out what's the worst case scenario. I'm arguing that where people go wrong is they're afraid to ask the what if questions at the beginning of the journey. So while they're pursuing their plan A, they're constantly looking over their shoulder, figuring out, oh, you know, what if this doesn't work out? I can't pay my bills. And that very act is the thing that undermines the likelihood that you're ever going to succeed. Now, if we've got a situation where one is hesitant to do this, how do you get somebody to the point where they can do it. The answer is about, it's all about synthesizing risk. Number one, what's the worst case that could happen if I don't succeed? Number two, what's the probability that that worst case is likely to materialize? Number three, what's the upside? What am I after? What would I be willing to do to deal with it? And if it doesn't materialize, how am I gonna mitigate it? Okay. If you go through that risk mitigation process at the beginning, then, okay, go ahead. No, 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 no I'm not letting you get away with okay. that. Okay, all right, please. Because if you go through, and, and this is where we're really coming to the okay. bedrock, whether or not risk takers are born or can be made, or is it nature or nurture? Because if you go through that risk process that you've just talked about, and you are naturally risk averse, you're going to give yourself the answers that will take you away from this. I don't believe that at all. I actually, this book is written for the angst-ridden, 
Uh, it's where it's written for people who suffer from anxiety. It's actually not a, uh, written for those who are totally comfortable with risk. It's written for the 48% of the people when you ask them, do you have a plan B? They say yes. That's statistically studies will show it's written for those people to figure out how do you manage your anxiety? Cause that's usually what's holding you back from going all in. I, I was reading the book on a plane and I became jittery and, 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 and the, uncomfortable that when, excites I read, me. when I read your story. <laughs> My yeah. circumstances were extreme. Yeah. I, I, I accept that the why I offer up my crazy story of dropping out of high school at 16 and going all in on my plan B my plan a rather is to demonstrate that when we are in a crisis we have clarity of decision making because we have less choices the purpose of burn the boats is to replicate crisis decision making when everything is fine and the way to do that is to go through this process you talk about CEOs and how CEOs um, don't delegate or they delegate too much um, what's the biggest mistake they make the CEOs? Yeah. Uh, Self-awareness. They are afraid to audit themselves, audit their decision making. They're afraid to look within because they're worried about what they might find. And then that is the greatest arbitrage entirely within our control is the way in which you can improve yourself and your decision making. And I find that the CEOs that are most help resistant are the ones most likely to fail. One piece of advice you would give. Don't be afraid to look within. Uh, it's true. It's we don't spend enough time talking about self-awareness. Self-awareness is the single greatest arbitrage available to you.